Cole made a deal with death, but it appears as if he got the short end of the stick. Hi, I'm author and creative warrior S. Faxon, and tonight I'm so excited to be interviewing Danielle Kahiaku about her book, An Extremist. Danielle, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Now, Danielle, I was really fortunate to get to read your book via audiobook, and I had such a blast. It was such an adventure. I didn't want it to end. <laughs> um, absolutely loved the story. Can you tell us and our, our viewers a bit more about An Extremist? It's a, you know, it's a supernatural Western, so it's kind of fun because, you know, I really like the Western genre, but it's kind of a, it's not a very popular genre. It's kind of a dying genre, so I kind of took that dying genre you know, theme and kind of ran with it with using a Grim Reaper as the main character. And it's a little bit of a horror, a little bit of a love story, um, but it has a lot of the old, you know, Western tropes. Horror and Westerns, like you were saying, are kind of a dying genre, but I heard recently on NPR how horror is actually starting to make a comeback. And horror makes all sorts of interesting things happen and all sorts of interesting challenges for us as authors. You know, how far do we go? What do we do? And, you know, is there a line or isn't there? Have you experienced any of these challenges that you could share with us? One of the issues I had with writing this story was I wanted to kind of bridge the gap between the two genres. I wanted to bring in those that read Westerns, but maybe introduce them to horror. At the same time, I wanted to, you know, grab those horror readers and introduce them to the Western genre because it's not a typical, you know, setting for horror. So it was kind of finding that sweet spot, be uh, sweet spot between the two so that I didn't overdo the gore. I didn't overdo the demons and the horror, but I wanted to stay true to the Western you know, the Western tempos, the Western tropes. So it was kind of just finding that sweet spot because it um, it did make it hard because a lot of my beta readers, I chose different beta readers from different genres. And there was a lot of likes and dislikes from both. Mm. And so I was trying to find um, how I can incorporate both that would appeal to a wider range of audience. You know, it's interesting because I would never have picked up a Western. Honestly, I mean, that that's not a genre that really appeals to me, unless there's something else with it. So I like paranormal Westerns or thriller Westerns. And so when I heard that your book was a horror Western, I was like, oh, I would love to read this because I, I am one of those weird in-between readers where I get bored with one genre. And so this really appealed to me, um, who's just really starting to get into the horror scene as an author, um, but has been a fan of the genre of horror for both movies and literature for some time. So this was a really great, um, like you said, bridge between the two genres, because now I am interested in learning more about Westerns. I do want to read those. So you, you definitely helped open my eyes to a whole new genre that I probably wouldn't have discovered. Good. And that's really what I wanted, just because I know even with horror, there's a lot of, um, there's a big stigma attached to the word horror. And so there's a lot of readers who wouldn't even pick up a horror novel just because of the, the label of horror. And so by having it, you know, labeled as a supernatural Western, it kind of, the idea was to kind of, you know, garner some interest from those that are kind of on the fence. So I'm glad that I was able to accomplish that. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> um, so, you know, aside from trying to bring readers in from different genres, what do you hope your readers take away from reading in Extremists? A lot of my stories, including this one, tend to be very character driven. And so this was really a story about relationships and family and how, you know, secrets can damage those relationships and they can definitely damage the bonds of, say, a family or, you know, a, a unit. And it was kind of over overcoming those overcoming those secrets for the characters and then finding inner strength. I know my main character, the female lead, Catherine, had to really step out of her comfort zone and become a strong person to take care of her family, to take care of her ranch and overcome those obstacles that were thrown at her in the book. And so I guess the themes, you know, I really have a lot of, you know, strong female leads, strong family ties, um, and a lot of character art. As far as my readers, you know, I just want them to have a good story. I really wanted to, you know, introduce them to two different genres. And so they can kind of branch out from what they normally might have read and, you know, hopefully find a new line of books that they enjoy. Well, Danielle, are there any other projects you'd like to talk about or uh, mention tonight? I don't have any more Westerns in the making as of now. 
you know, that was kind of a, that was a love project for me. It was something that I always wanted to do. Um, I do have the third installment to a science fiction romance series that I'm working on. The, that is due to be released November 16th. It's called the Saskir Brothers Chronicles. And that's going to be due, or that's coming out the 16th. And then that's also coming out as a box set on the same day. So that's a fun project that I've been working on. And then I also have a second middle grade novel, which is a second installment to the Wormholes trilogy that I'm working on that is coming out in spring of 2021. Well, very nice. It sounds like you have no shortage of projects going on. And that's just fantastic. Um, viewers, be sure to check out the description box below. I'll be sure to have all the links to Danielle's social media and her website included down there. Also be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because we're not through with Danielle. We're gonna have one more interview with her talking about what it's like to produce an audiobook. And Danielle, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. This was an absolute blast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.